Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we made a menu state, actually, a menu state. So here's our little menu. We have this options button that takes us to the options, of which we have none. And we also have this play button, which takes us to the game state. What we don't have, however, is sound. It is very quiet and a little boring. So I'm thinking that today we're going to make a very simple sound system. And just to have some sort of sound to play, I made this very quick and very small track to play as a background music. And I did that using this tool. And I am a complete beginner. So there's this video that I watched first by Brackies, and I'm sure that many of you know who that is. He does videos for Unity. Um, he made this video on this tool with the most evil name I've ever seen. I don't know how anyone's supposed to be able to pronounce that. Uh, maybe it's in some cool language that I don't know what that language is. I'm not even going to try to say it, but this tool wasn't entirely intuitive, but it worked quite well to make something quick. So if you want to do something, then I definitely recommend watching Bracky's video on this and using this tool. And then I ended up with this. So it's just a very quick little track, so we have something to play around with. But to make something that sounds prettier, you'd probably need to spend quite a lot of time. Anyway, having beautiful music wasn't the point. The point was making a sound system and having something to test that out with. So let's get to that. First of all, in the source folder, let's create a new package and call it audio. In here, I am going to have an audio player. And I'm just going to create quickly an audio clip class. And I'm going to make this abstract. All right, going back to the audio player, this player, the state is going to have an audio player. The audio player is going to have a list of all the current clips that they're playing. Uh, audio clips will be fine. And let's also make this private. All right, so it's going to have a list of all the clips that we are currently playing. That way we can find them and change their volume in case you change their volume. All right, let's first make a constructor. We're not going to take the list in, but we need to initialize it. So audio clips is a new array list. All right. What are the things that we need? We need a way to get the clips. So what I've gone ahead, uh, gone ahead and done is under the resources folder, I've added a folder called sounds. And in there, I added this wav file that I made with this tool and you will find this in a link in the description if you don't want to make your own. So resources sounds and I put this iso bubbler dot wav there. Wave I guess. All right so we need a method that will load one of these clips. So let's do that. It will return a clip, and clip is from the Java X sound package. Get clip, and we take in a file name. All right, so we need to open an audio input stream, but first we need a URL. So we get a URL, I'm going to call this sound file. And let's load resources the way that we've done before. It will be under the sounds folder. And then you just give it the file name. 
All right, now let's do a try with resources. So here you can say audio input stream, audio input stream is equal to, also let's import that, is equal to audio system, which are all from the JavaX sound package, uh, dot get audio input stream, and it wants a URL, and we have one. So sound file. All right, and then let's open that up. So what this is saying now is that it ex it's expecting a catch clause. So let's give it one. Uh, it generated these for us. It's two different ones. And I don't know if we want, I'm not going to print the stack, stack trace for now. I'm actually even going to remove that. And instead, I'm going to add this catch so it's in the same catch. And let's just really print whatever exception we got, but we're not doing the stack trace, so we won't let it uh, crash. All right. If we do find this audio input stream from the audio file, then we want to do something. We want to get the clip from that. So first we say audio system get clip. We get an empty clip. And now this also needs to get in with, oh, sorry. I wanted to add it to the other ones. There we go. So we get a clip from our audio system and this will be an empty clip. So we need to give the clip, let's see, open. We need an audio input stream and we have one. So we have opened the audio input stream, which is the sound file. We put it in this clip and I'm just gonna say, set microsecond position to zero, just in case. And then we wanna return this clip. All right, and if we're down here, it wants us to return something. Let's return null for now. And I'm gonna use these in two different methods. So one will be, we will um, categorize our audio clips into two categories, like is common, I feel. So either music, the clip is a, a track, like a music track, or it's a sound, some sort of in-game sound of an action maybe or something else. So therefore, we're going to have two different um, methods here. So let's do a public void play music. And this needs the file name string. And I changed my mind. This will probably, this can probably be private. I don't think we're going to use it outside of this class. So we're having play music and we're also having play sound. Play sound. All right, so what we need to do is we first need to get the clip, get clip of this file name, and then we want to make an audio clip that is a music clip. So now is the time to go into our audio clip and start filling this in a little bit. This will keep a clip inside of it. So sorry, private final clip clip. And we can make a constructor that takes in the clip. When we get the clip, we want to start it. All right. We are going to want some things. I want to have an update method. And we are going to add the volume control to our game settings class. So we're, we're going to let this volume be a game setting. Okay, let's see what that means. I'm going to take in a game settings here. Currently, we don't have any volume in here. Let's just go in here and I'm going to actually make two different ones. I'm going to have a float for our music volume and then just copy that and do a sound volume. And 
there's going to be some sort of we're not going to set the volume directly we're going to set the gain so that's going to be at zero by default which will be some sort of the default value of the gain or the volume that we have so zero is going to be default which it doesn't mean that it's quiet you can go like minus 80 i think for the gain um, therefore we're going to set these to music volume to be zero from the start also let's make getters and setters for both of those awesome let's close out of that so what does this mean for us this means that we can change the volume here and we're going to do that by using a float control which is also part of this package so let's import that class i'm going to say control is equal to and we need to cast this to a float control and we're doing the clip get control and we need to give it a type. I'm gonna say, let's see, master gain. Okay, it doesn't recognize that. So there we go, float control, master gain. All right, so now that we have this control, we can set the value. And it will be game settings, actually here, we're in the abstract class, so we don't know if it's a music clip or a sound clip. Therefore, let's make a, an abstract method. And it's not gonna be public, it's gonna be protected, and it's gonna be an abstract float. Get volume, and it takes in the game settings. There we go, now we can call that get volume game settings. All right, so we're setting the value of the volume that we're getting from our implementing classes. Let's make a couple of implementing classes. We only need two. So it's either a music clip. All right, and this extends the audio clip implement methods and this will not return zero it will return game settings get music volume and it also needs a matching constructor all right let's make the next one which will be the sound clip and this extends audio clip Let's implement that. And here we do game settings, get sound volume. And let's also create a constructor matching super. All right, we have our sound clip, our music clip. We have this audio clip. And we are gonna want a couple of more things. So we wanna know if this audio clip is finished because at some point we wanna get rid of it from keeping track of it here in the audio player. So we need to be able to ask it, are you done? And actually, I guess we could do that. No. Yeah. All right. Let's call this a public Boolean has finished playing. And we'll return clip not is running of course so if we're not running we've finished playing so it's safe to delete us but we also want something called cleanup because just like we do with our graphics objects we want to release some memory and we can do that by saying close on our clip there we go we can close out of this now and inside of the audio player we want an update method. Actually, we were doing this. Let's just finish this up. This means we want to do audio clips, add new music clip with this clip inside. And let's just copy this into the sound and instead add a sound clip. All right, now we want the update method. 
So public void update, and this took a game settings, game settings. And then let's say audio clips for each audio clip. Audio clip, whoop, update using the game settings. And after we've updated them all, we wanna clean them up. So knowing about concurrent modification exceptions, let's keep ourselves clear of that by using a copy of the audio clips list. And then say for each audio clip. And there we go. If audio clip has finished playing, then audio clip cleanup, audio clips remove audio clip. Then we have cleaned that up as well. All right, I feel like this is good. Let's go into our state and give it an audio player. All right, audio player, audio player. Awesome, let's set that to something. Audio player is a new audio player. Cool, now let's try inside of our menu state. Down here, let's say audio player, play music. And this is called isobubbler.wave. Let's see if it works. And it is playing something, look at that. That's really cool. Okay, we've used quite a lot of time, so I think that this will have to be it for today. Next time, we'll continue by um, implementing a way of editing the volume. But for now, we got the music. Awesome. All right, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Hey, Dua.